Hey, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about direct preference optimization. This is one of the best paper uh, at uh, New Rips 2023. So let's get started. Uh, you know, before we understand how DPO works or the direct preference optimization works, it's a good idea to sort of recap how reinforcement learning using human feedback is done with these large language models these days. Okay, the RLHF pipeline actually involves three different phases. Uh, in the first phase is supervised fine tuning. Second one is learning the reward model. And the third phase is really using reinforcement learning based optimization to update the model parameters. Okay. So in the first phase, the first phase is very simple as the name says, it's just standard supervised fine tuning. So you essentially take some supervised fine tuning data relevant to your particular task and you actually uh, you know, fine tune a pre trained language model to come up with a supervised fine tuned uh, uh, checkpoint by SFT. Okay. So, in the reinforcement learning kind of lingo, I'll also call this model as a policy in that sense. Okay. Uh, the second stage, uh, this is the first stage, this is the second stage, and the third stage. So, in the second stage, essentially preference sampling and reward learning is done. So, what does that mean? That basically means that you take your PI SFT model and you essentially give it a prompt X. The prompt basically just means input X, and then you ask it to produce two answers, Y1 and Y2. Okay, These two could possibly be, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, top two answers that the model provides. Okay, So uh, Y1 and Y2, and then you take these two answers and you ask human labelers to label which one is preferable over the other as an answer. So let's say the, uh, you know, the, the preferred one is called YW and the less preferred one is called YL. Okay. Now further, what you do is to train a separate model. You call it as a reward model, which basically tries to give preference to YW over YL. So this reward model sort of tries to understand that, hey, YW should get a better reward and YL should get a lower reward, okay? So uh, now this reward model can be uh, uh, you know, modeled in several ways. The most popular way is called as the BT modeling, uh, which stands for Bradley Terry modeling. modeling. Uh, which stipulates this human preference distribution uh, essentially. So the probability that Y1 is preferred over Y2 given the input X is basically given using this, uh, uh, you know, uh, logic kind of formulation. Okay. So that's basically that. Now, uh, which basically means that you could uh, uh, take a large data set D uh, where each instance in D comprises of X, Y, L, and Y, W, right? So uh, an input, a preferred response, and a less preferred response. You know, you take a data set up with these kinds of triples, and then you try to estimate the parameters phi of the reward model. So essentially what you end up doing is to learn this reward model, uh, R phi x y, which basically takes, you know, these three things, x, y l, and y w, and uh, tries to optimize for this particular loss. Uh, it tries to ensure uh, that uh, the reward for YW is higher than the reward for YL. Uh, and then basically, of course, it basically tries to minimize the log sigmoid loss. Okay. So here, uh, the, um, here, here the model R is initialized using pi SFT, uh, the same fine-tuned model, which you are trying to originally optimize. Uh, uh, with uh, so it's a transformer kind of model in the language modeling world. So you take the pi SFT and then for the last layer, you essentially take the CLS output and connect it with a uh, with a linear layer so as to produce a scalar prediction for the reward value. So remember, you know you have used these preference examples which have been provided by humans and therefore it's called human feedback, right? And you take those preference examples and you learn the reward model which has a similar architecture as your, uh, you know, sometimes it could have a different architecture, but it could have a similar architecture as your original uh, PI SFT model, so that you can use the PI SFT to initialize your reward model, and then uh, you train it uh, uh, using uh, this kind of a simple loss function, so as to give preference to the preferred response compared to the less preferred response, okay? And this is basically learned using uh, maximum likelihood estimation, so it's basically as simple as that. So, so the broad idea in reinforcement learning uh, RLHF is basically that you take preference data, you use maximum likelihood estimate kind of uh, uh, optimization so as to train a reward model. Now, this reward model is actually used so as to update your policy. So, or your current model, PI SFT, you want to update it over iterations, and that's basically what is done in this reinforcement learning part. In this reinforcement learning part, you use the reward R to provide feedback to the language model and improve it. And the way you do that is as follows. You, of course, want to maximize the reward. 
So, you know, given the data set, label data set X comma Y, you want to, of course, maximize the reward uh, for, for, you know, uh, in, in this preference data. But at the same time, you do not want to move a lot far away from your original uh, policy. So remember, you started off with pi SFT. You do not want to, you want to make sure that your model does not really, uh, uh, you know, uh, drift a lot away from that one. And therefore, what you want to do is that while you want to maximize the reward, you also want to make sure that the divergence, the KL divergence specifically, of your model being trained, pi theta is the model being trained with theta as the parameters, is, is not very, you know, the KL divergence between the model being trained and the original pi reference or the pi SFT model is not very large. So uh, it goes without saying that pi reference is actually set to pi SFT itself, and pi theta is actually initialized using pi SFT itself. So that at the beginning, essentially, the divergence is very low. Uh, and while it tries to maximize the reward, it basically also tries to ensure that the KL divergence is small, and then uh, you know the model does not drift a lot far away from the original starting point. Okay. Now, because uh, NLG is discrete in nature, so generations are all discrete in nature, therefore this objective is not differentiable, and which is why you need a reinforcement learning algorithm to do these updates, this, these particular updates. Uh, and popular algorithm which is used is basically PPO. Of course, people also use reinforce, but more recently PPO has become a very popular reinforcement learning algorithm in the language modeling world. Now, what is the problem with RLHF? The problem with RLHF, with this kind of philosophy that I just talked about on the previous slide, is that it is complex and unstable. Lots of hyperparameters to tune. Okay. And therefore, in this paper, people came up with this new idea called as DPO. It's actually a pretty simple idea. There's a whole bunch of theory uh, behind this simplicity, but I'll avoid that theory in this particular video. Okay. So it's called the direct preference optimization. And uh, uh, what DPO does is that it optimizes for human preferences, just like RLHF. Uh, however, rather than having a reward model and you know using it to update the policy and so on, it basically is a very, very simple method. It avoids reinforcement learning totally. There's no reward modeling. There is no reinforcement learning. So there's no PPO as such. It's just DPO, OK? So um, it basically uses human preference data uh, and basically just uses a simple uh, binary cross entropy loss objective uh, while avoiding re reinforcement learning totally. Okay. Uh, in fact, what it does is to basically just optimize this guy. Now, this guy, as you notice, is uh, actually so. So let's understand what are the what are the parts in this guy, right? So this pi reference, which is basically your original model, which is supervised supervised fine tuned model in that senses. And this pi theta, which is basically going to be your model after you have done DPO over it. So finally, you'll basically get pi theta, where theta are the hyperparameters of this model. Okay. And then there is human preference data. So for an input x, you basically prefer the response yw over yl. Okay. So as you notice, you, you might be able to notice that this one sort of really looks like uh, uh, the reward uh, kind of stuff, the optimization for the reward, where the reward function can be, uh, uh, you know, the implicit reward function being optimized can be written like that, beta times log of pi theta divided by pi ref. Okay. Now, notice that, uh, uh, you know, um, um, there is no reinforcement learning that happened separately and the reward model that is learned separately. No, there's nothing of that kind. In fact, the entire thing happens using only one optimization. Okay. Uh, so interestingly, DPO sort of uh, implicitly fits a reward model whose corresponding optimal policy can be sort of extracted in closed form, and therefore you do not need that two-step stuff at all. Okay. Uh, now, and, and since this is all differentiable, you really do not need a reinforcement learning algorithm there. Okay. So essentially, uh, the DPO steps is super simple. You use the same preference data as you used in RLHF also, and you do maximum likelihood-based estimations just to directly get the final language model. Uh, rather than first get a reward model and then uh, essentially, uh, uh, you know, use reinforce, using reinforcement learning. Okay. In fact, a gradient update step in uh, uh, DPO looks like this. Okay. Uh, beta, of course, is a hyperparameter which basically decides how much importance do you give um, in RLHF, in RLHF, right? How much importance do you give to uh, reducing the scale divergence versus optimizing or increase or maximizing the reward? Okay. Now, um, as you notice, in every gradient step, what uh, DPO tries to do is to increase the likelihood of the preferred response over the not so preferred response, right? Over the less preferred response. Also, what it does is to take every element X and weigh it appropriately, okay? And what is the weight? Well, the weight is higher when the reward estimate is wrong, okay? So the interesting part is that it increases the relative log probability of preferred response to the dispreferred responses. But it also incorporates an interesting dynamic, for example, importance weight that prevents model degeneration. It sort of ensures 
uh, you know that uh, uh, you would basically update the weights uh, more strongly um, if uh, uh, update update you know do most larger updates if your reward estimate was incorrect okay so now the interesting part is that you need not sample these preference data sets from your original pi sft in fact if you have external publicly available preference data for your task just go ahead and use that directly okay uh, also, just like RLHF, you will set our pi ref to pi SFT, the supervised fine-tuned model, and pi theta is also initialized with pi SFT, just like you would do uh, in RLHF. Okay. So, how does DPO compare with RLHF? Uh, now, it turns out that DPO actually compares favorably compared to RLHF. Okay. So, what is drawn here is basically reward versus scale divergence between the new model that is trained compared to the pi ref or the supervised fine-tuned model. Now, remember in RLHF, these are the two parameters which are in trade-off. You want to maximize rewards, you want to minimize your KL divergence. Okay? Uh, obtaining a very good trade-off between the two is a great thing to have. This is basically plotted for the IMDB sentiment generation data set where the goal was to do controlled sentiment generation. So if you basically take X as a prefix of an IMDB movie review, the goal was to basically make sure that your GPT-2 large model generates a Y with positive sentiment. And then they have their own preference data set on which you could do RLHF or you could do a DPO. Okay? So here what is shown is that this, this yellow curve right at the top is basically a DPO. So which basically says that um, a DPO strikes a great balance between the reward and the KL divergence, much better compared to other algorithms like uh, variants of PPO. PPO, as you might recall, is a RLHF algorithm. So compared to PPO, DPO is better. Okay? The other task that they optimize for that they do experiments with is summarization. Here the input is uh, a forum post from Reddit and the model or the policy must generate a summary Y. Okay. Now basically they uh, here what is compared is a win rate versus uh, uh, human return summary. So you take a human return summary and you take a model generated summary and you ask GPT-4, hey, which one is more preferred? Okay. So as you observe, uh, you know, uh, anything above 50% is great. And as you observe, the yellow bar is right at the top, which yellow, yellow line is at the top, which is basically the DPO baseline. Uh, there are PPO variants and there, the supervised fine-tuned, uh, you know, baseline model is right there. So supervised fine-tuned model is not as good as human, but the PPO, uh, the, but the DPO, the direct preference optimization based optimized model is actually better than human, uh, uh, you know, uh, human summaries, okay? So that's and and this this plot the x-axis is sampling temperature. So of course every um, every large language model actually has a sampling temperature. So across these sampling temperature ranges, you see better performance using DPO compared to both SFT, PPO as well as human uh, written summaries. Okay, so in summary, in this particular video, I talked about RLHF. How do you do RLHF for large language models? I also talked about the importance of using preference data. So, you, you know, getting preference data from humans is actually much easier than getting absolute uh, uh, ratings for any particular summary or sentiment value in that census. So therefore, there's a whole bunch of uh, clean, uh, wealthy, uh, rich data, um, uh, you know, when it comes to rich information in preference data sets. So using them is super important and RLHF is a way of using them. However, RLHF is unstable and requires a whole bunch of uh, para hyperparameter optimization. It also requires a reward model to be trained and several steps uh, overall, right? But DPO on the other hand is a simple training paradigm for training such language models from preferences without doing any reinforcement learning, but using a very simple binary cross entropy loss. A DPO performs similarly or better than existing RLHF algorithms like PPO and therefore it is now the preferred choice for uh, learning from uh, uh, preference data uh, for large language models. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my search on my homepage. Thank you.